Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. As you can see, I am sitting on the D7, so that can mean only one thing. It's a B175 video. Uh, and I think this is going to be the very last um, workshop series uh, on the B175, because today we're going to try and get the thing running. Um, so expect some excitement, expect some noise, expect some fairly gash setups in the workshop with the engine. Um, but I think it's going to be fun. I think we're going to have a, a good time and hopefully uh, at the end of the video um, we'll make some noise, we'll make some smoke and we'll prove um, the work that we've done so far. So without further ado, let's go do some work. And that would have worked really well if there had been a battery fitted, uh, but there isn't, so uh, I'll get my coat. Right, let's go do some work. Right, what are we up to? Um, well, you can see that I've got this old frame in the vise, and um, this is the old D5 frame that I had. It's a bit bent out of shape, but, you know, it's good enough to hold an engine. And as you can see, Peter's engine is bolted into it, and it's clamped in the vise. And um, you might be wondering, what's this gash set up with a um, ratchet strap? Well, it's a gash setup with a ratchet strap, quite frankly. Um, I'm doing my best to make sure that nothing moves and um, we don't end up dropping Peter's newly rebuilt engine on the floor because uh, then I'd have to buy him a new one. And um, I think VSA is closed today. So it's a bit of belt and braces, really, just to try and keep everything where it is. Um, I think that the Swindon's Vice has got a really good grip. I mean, it's... Um, it's a beast of a vice, and um, when it gets a hold of something, it really gets a hold of something. So I don't think that's going anywhere. But the plan is, um, really, just to see if we've got a spark uh, from the new ignition system, and then um, just to see if we can get a bit of a pop out of it. Um, I haven't got any cables on the carburetor, you can see here. Um, but with these concentrics, they're a strange design, really. Um, when you've got no tension on the spring, the choke is on. And you actually, so when you're riding normally with the choke off, you've got tension on the choke spring, which is weird, isn't it? Because normally when you've got a choke on, you've got tension on the spring just for the period when the choke is on. But no, it's the other way around with these. Um, you ride normally with a compressed spring holding the choke off. And when you put the choke on, um, it relaxes the spring. So, you know, I think I've explained that anyway. Um, you get what I'm saying. So what I'm, what I'm basically saying is, if we were to kick this over, it'd be kicking over with the choke on. So, you know, we're more likely to get a bit of a pop out of it um, from cold than yeah, than we would. Otherwise, um, to actually run it, we probably need to rig up a throttle cable. And I've probably got a length of cable with a carburetor nipple on the end of it that we could, that we could um, you know, just bodge into there for now. But... Um, yeah, that's not the plan. I'm just going to see if we can get a bit of a pop out of it, really. And if it fires up, it fires up. Um, but uh, we'll see. Right, let me take you around the other side of the bench and show you what I've been doing with the uh, with the ignition system. Right, what's going on with this uh, box of tricks? So we've got the cable coming out of the engine, um, coming from the um, the stator, and here's the uh, the plug on the end going to our CDI unit. We've got the CDI unit wired into the stop switch. We've got the CDI earth going to a mass earth point, which is also earthing the ignition coil. It's also earthing the stop switch. We've got a jumper cable going from here to the engine. So everything's bonded together and we've got a good earth. Let me just show you with my, um, diode setting. So if I put one probe on the engine, one probe on that mass earth, we get tone, which tells us that everything's bonded and earthed to the engine. So that's good. We've got our ignition coil connected into our CDI. And we've also got our, um, get it in the camera. We've got our plug cap connected. Nice plug cap. You get, a, you get a good quality plug cap with these um, kits. So that's good. So that's connected. We need a spark plug, obviously. I've got one. 
Um, I'll get that in a minute. We've got our yellow cables, AC current coming from our uh, stator going to the reg rec, connected up. I haven't cut the cable. It's still at six on the six volt mode because I don't know what Peter's going to want to do. I'm guessing most people go 12 volts so they can fit LED bulbs, but I'm making no assumptions. It's it's his um, his property, his decision. So I've left it in six volt mode at the moment, but I don't like to run anything electrical without a load because um, that's how things get burned out. That's how diodes go and things like that. So we've just got a little bulb connected down here. To the output so that it's a 12 volt bulb so you know it's a decent load um it's not just uh you know it's a, a worthy resistance shall we say um so it's something for the uh, output to dump into and be dissipated so that we don't get any um any problems with our reg rack so as we stand um we should have a spark so i'm going to get a plug and um We'll make sure that it's earthed. I'll put a, a separate earth lead on the plug, actually, because word of caution, when you are messing around with CDI ignitions, if your plug isn't earthed properly and you kick it, um, you can end up with uh, damage to your CDI unit um, because basically there's nowhere for that high tension to go and um, it can end up popping your CDI unit. So that's a word of caution. Always make sure that your plug is properly earthed. You know, if you're checking for a spark or something like that, don't just um, take it for granted that your plug is earthed. Otherwise, you might end up killing your uh, CDI box. So we'll do that, and we'll see if we get a spark. Um, if we get a spark, um, well, we'll put some oil in the, uh, in the gearbox, and we'll squirt a bit of fuel in and see if we can get a pop. And... Yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see what we get and um, <laughs> a bit of trepidation for me because obviously I've just built this engine and I want it to be good. Um, but yeah, you know, we've got to give it a go at some point. So just a, a different view. Um, you can see that I've got an exhaust downpipe fitted. There's no exhaust gasket in there. I didn't want to use the new exhaust gasket um, just, as, just for experimentation. So it's probably going to leak a little bit. And there's no silencer fitted, so if it does fire up, <laughs> I'm going to have my air defenders on in here because it's going to be loud. Um, but um, obviously, we won't be able to run it for too long because I'll have all the neighbours around wondering what's going on, thinking I've detonated a bomb or something. But um, anyway, um, this is the large ball pipe because obviously this is a B175. And this is a D5 frame, and you can see there that there's not an awful lot of room, but it will go. So if you um, if you're building a special building a bit of a hybrid and you, you're wondering if you can put a later large bore um, pipe uh, cylinder barrel into an earlier frame it will go it will go just so um, there you go that might be useful to someone you never know anyway I'm gonna find a spark plug um, I have got a new one so stand by champion n4c you need to take that bit off because the um, the plug cap doesn't need that bit. So let's um, let's get it in there. Ooh, good fit. There we go. And it's a bit belt and braces, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm just going to put another little lead on. I don't know how much you're going to see from where you are there. I'm just going to earth that electrode there. Some of you are thinking, what are you doing, you fool? Don't bother. But I'm going to do it anyway. Don't know if you're going to see the spark, if there is one. Because the thing with CDI um, systems is sparks are quite hard to see. They're not like the ones you get with, um, and I'm assuming, you know, I'm talking to people that haven't used these systems before. I know a lot of you have. But um, they're different. The spark you get when you've got contact breaker and, and coil and the lights off. You generally get that fat blue spark, don't you? You don't get that with CDIs. You get a kind of a very thin white spark. It can be quite hard to see. And a lot of people say, my CDI is not sparking. 
and it is, you're just looking at it in bright daylight and you can't see it. It's a really hot spark, but it's very, very, um, you know, wire thin and, um, and a different color. So let's see what we get. Okay, so I'm definitely getting a spark there. Oh, there's stuff falling over on the bench. Okay, I think we've proved that point, haven't we? I hope you saw that. I'm not sure if you would have, but... Um, I definitely saw a spark, so that's, that's a win. System works. Right. Put the plug in. Right, I've been doing a bit more prep work. The spark plug is now fitted in the head. Um, I've cable tied off the HT lead uh, in a couple of places just to make sure the coil is nice and secure and uh, isn't you know going to get knocked or anything like that. All the cables are in a reasonably safe location, um, so that nothing can short out. And I've cable tied the um, kill switch up here so that I can get to it easily to stop the engine um, should it fire up. Uh, Right, what do we need to do? So we need some oil in the transmission, in the gearbox. So I will check the uh, drain plug is tight. We'll put some oil in there. Uh, and then we need some fuel. And I've got one of those rem uh, remote fuel tanks somewhere. I think it's in the midden that is the other shed. Uh, so I'll go, have to go and have a look for it. Uh, I've only used it a few times, so it should still be in the box. So it should be reasonably easy to find. So I'll go and dig that out. I should have been more prepared, really, but there we go. Uh, we'll get some fuel in, get some oil in, and um, give it a go. And um, I don't know if anybody else is mildly terrified, but um, I am slightly. Um, but then I suppose you're not locked in here with it, are you? And I am. But uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. I don't think it's going anywhere unless it takes the bench with it. And um, we can always hit the kill switch, can't we? But, um, yeah, let's give it a go. Let's get some oil. Right, time for some lubrication. And... Um, We've got Grandad's official BSA Bantam drain plug spanner made by Linco, made in England. Look at that. From the 40s, I would think, or the 50s. And uh, absolutely perfect for getting on the drain plug on a Bantam. And that's tight. And um, that wasn't tight because I didn't tighten it up. Yeah, perfect little spanner for doing the job. And... Um, that's what he used it for, so that's what we're going to use it for. And uh, no dipstick on these uh, later engines. There's a level plug here, so I'm going to take that out. A little fibre washer on it. And uh, put that on the bench. Just need something to catch any drips. Um, stand by while I grab some. Right, just stuffed some workshop wipe in there, um, some workshop towel just to um, catch any drips. And uh, this is what we're going to be using. Uh, Rock Oil Classic. And um, I've used Rock Oil products now. Oh, I don't know. More than 30 years. Well, since I was 16 when I started riding motorbikes, and I'm 51 now, so there you go. I mean, not 100% exclusively because... You know, I've not always been able to get it, but I've used rock oil, uh, engine oil, two-stroke, uh, fork oil, coolant, you name it, I've used it. And um, I like it. I just, I've just stuck with it because I like the stuff. Uh, obviously, they don't pay me to say that. And uh, I only ever recommend what I buy with my own money. So there you go. If you find something that you like, you stick with it, don't you? Let's start putting some of this in there. Like a lot of manufacturers, they do a classic oil now, which is designed for engines like this, that um, they were designed at a time when synthetic lubricants didn't exist so you know you're not going to have any problems with your clutch or anything like that um, which 
modern friction improvers don't really work with um, old-fashioned uh, clutch linings. But I imagine this is not the uh, most exciting video in the world watching me pour oil into an engine, so uh, we'll come back. Right, I've dug out the um, portable fuel tank or temporary fuel tank. You can see it up there hanging from one of the roof beams. Uh, it's a Sealy one. And um, well, I have to conclude that I've never used it before because I've certainly opened the box. The box was opened, uh, the little piece of tape was cut. But the whole thing was completely disassembled. I can't imagine that I've taken it apart and completely disassembled it again. Um, so I thought I'd used it before, but obviously not. I used to use an old um, lawnmower tank. The Tecumseh um, either a lawnmower or a um, weed whacker type thing tank, which was really good. I mean, a real good quality uh, tank, but it was very difficult to hang up. It wanted to lean over. And then it would starve itself because it would it would lean over and then the fuel wouldn't reach the uh, the outlet unless it was um you know completely full of fuel you know real high quality piece of kit but um fortunately um sometimes a little bit tricky to use so we'll give it a go with this one and um that must have been why i bought this one for that very reason i can't remember um anyway i'm waffling aren't i sorry about that right so we've got fuel in the tank and we've got fuel down to the little, um, move it back a bit, down to the little fuel tap that's fitted to it. So what I'm going to do now is let the fuel go further into the float bowl and squeeze past the camera. We're a bit uh, struggling for space in here this morning. Oh, well, every day, let's be honest. Um, so let's let some fuel, oh, we've got a leak, we've got a leak. We have got a leak at the float bowl union. So let me um, give that a nip and then. Right, I fixed that little weepage from the, well, torrent from the float bowl. It just needed a little bit of a, a, a loosen back off and a nip back up again. And it's dry now. And I'm um, just going to, yep, we've got a nice full float bowl. So, um, Got no throttle control, so that could be an issue. But uh, the choke, as I mentioned earlier, uh, looks like there's petrol bubbling out the back of the carburetor. Could be a problem. Right. This carb was pretty full of water, but it has had uh, an ultrasonic clean. So let's see. I'm going to climb up here and kick it. You keep an eye on the exhaust just in case I miss something. See what happens. Don't try this at home, folks. Or do, because it might be quite good fun. Who knows? Oh, I think everything's going to fall off the shelves. Nada. Absolutely nada. Right. Let's have a look at the spark plug. It smells of fuel. It isn't soaking wet, so that's one thing. Probably right in your way, aren't I? But and we'll get out of your way in a minute. Okay. Right, I've had the plug in and out. And uh, it uh, looks okay. Wasn't gassed up. It did smell of fuel, so something's getting through. But I think we're going to need the cables, really. I think we're going to need to be able to adjust the choke in throttle positions to try and get anywhere. Oh, wait a minute. I 
That was promising. That's gone. Well, um, I wonder. Uh, give it a squirt of braid X. Probably won't do any good, but you never know. Okay, a couple more goes. It's going to be a cup of tea time. Well, first few sparks of life. <laughs> More than can be said for me. I'm knackered. Anyway. Try and wedge the choke a little bit. Microphone's on. That's a good sign. Well, yeah, I think experiment over until we get the, uh, get some control over the carburetor. So I shall leave it at that for now. Well, what a turn up. What an absolute turn up. Um, I think that conclusively proves that it runs. Uh, I think that's all we're going to do. Um, very loud. And uh, yeah, very loud indeed. But um, yeah, I think that that kind of puts us in the ballpark doesn't it so i think the next time we run the engine we need to have it um, in a bike and um, have all the cables connected up and you know give it a proper proper run but um that's very encouraging that it starts and um you know it lifts itself from the idle it revs up and um yeah gonna count that as a bit of a win basically all i've done um, since the last sort of couple of little pops is I've just left it a little bit. I took the plug out again, aired it out, left it and, um, yeah, just kicked it up again. I think it just got a little bit gassed up. Um, but, uh, winner. I'm happy with that. We'll call that a success. So, um, we need a motorbike to put it in now. So, uh, no pressure, Peter, no pressure at all. Um, but uh, yeah, that's your engine. It's a runner, and um, once we get it installed in a bike, we can you know tune it up properly and get it running sweetly. And I um, think it will do you well. So on that note, I'm going to finish the video. I'll say thanks very much indeed for watching. Well, we were cruelly cut off there by a um, dead camera battery, but um, I was saying thanks for watching and. Uh, I mean it wholeheartedly. Thanks very much indeed for tuning in. And we got to see the B175 engine running, which uh, certainly for me is a, is a, a good moment. 
um, considering the condition that it came in, the workshop um, in, having been you know outside for um, almost five decades, um, I'm really pleased that we've been able to save it and um, you know it gets to live again, which just goes to show, doesn't it? Really, that um, you know they can get into some pretty horrendous uh, conditions, uh, but with a bit of um, TLC and a bit of care and attention. Uh, you can bring them back uh, and that kind of that's what we're all in it for really i think isn't it that's certainly why why i do it um i don't like to think of these old things ending up in a skip so um yeah um i'm really pleased that you were able to share in um you know getting it going and, and seeing it run and we've certainly given the uh, the new electronic uh, ignition system um a bit of a a test um, which I think it's past flying colors quite happy with that uh, very easy to use very easy to fit and um, judging by the, um, the brightness that we're getting in that bulb there uh, plenty of output and that was on the 6 volt system uh, running through a 12 volt bulb just to give it some load make sure we didn't burn anything out but um, that's it I think um, yeah we need to get it in the bank now and um, you know properly finish it off um, get an exhaust silencer on there, um, tune the carburetor up, get an air filter on, all that good stuff. But um, yeah, I'm doing it again. <laughs> I'm wandering far from the point, which was thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Um, those of you that have been with me for quite some time, thanks for sticking with me. Those of you that have recently come along, very much appreciate you signing up and uh, I hope that you're enjoying what we're doing. And for those of you uh, yet to subscribe, um, please do uh, hit the button, uh, ring the bell, and um, more of this kind of thing uh, will be coming your way, and uh, you'll know about it instantaneously. Um, so that's it. I will uh, leave it there. Mind how you go, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.